Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Mothman Podcast. Tonight we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to try something different anyway. And uh, everybody knows, uh, my name's Daryl, and I'm the Mothman. And uh, one of the reasons that I got into this was uh, the fact that uh, I really like to investigate paranormal activity. I've been an investigator for over 40 years. And uh, I kind of like Joe Friday, uh, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. So uh, I hope to bring the, the factual end of the, uh, the science of paranormal into these investigations and dealing with the facts and go from there. Uh, in the uh, studio with me tonight, I have a, our co-producer and... Hi, my name is Bruce. I've been a paranormal investigator for about three years in my spare time. I'm a former military. I've been in the Army for eight years. And now I'm trying to help out and hopefully find some awesome evidence of the paranormal. You know, Bruce, I started off with this, um, doing some research, and, and I really um, have a, a, a belief that... Uh, in the quantum theory where it says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, uh, it can only be changed. And um, I look at our body as a, um, a conduit that our soul kind of flows through. And I would actually 100% agree with that. I, uh, I mean, bioelectricity is generated by a a bunch of different organisms. I mean, the, you got the eel, which generates bioelectricity to the point that it actually discharges and, you know, uh, shocks its predators. So, I mean, I, I mean, I uh, definitely believe that, I mean, in the, because I have a background in science myself, and that energy can't be just created nor destroyed. And it seems like that would make a lot of sense to me. I mean, uh, do you feel like when we hear these stories of the out of body, uh, you know, experiences, that it could be the energy of our consciousness or our soul, which is leaving the conduit, and the conduit takes this energy through our brains, and our brain is constantly absorbing this energy and these electrical impulses and kind of puts it into a, a, a library where we as a human can uh, separate these impulses and and put it back out through our visual system, which is our eyes, as a camera would. And we're seeing our life, um, you know, day by day, everything we look at is, is an image that goes into our brain, processed and come back out on the screen, which is our, our vision. Um, do you think that this is uh, the, the actual spirit leaves the body, the electricity leaves the body, and then for whatever reason it comes back to the body? When it comes back to the body, it's processed through the brain and gives it back to us as a visual image? Uh, that's a really tough question to answer. I mean, uh, as far as, I mean, a lot of people claim they've had out of body experiences. I'm throwing you under the bus, buddy. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> did, definitely threw me under the bus on that one. <laughs> I mean, I've never personally had an out-of-body experience, but I mean, there, there have been multiple claims, you know, throughout the years of people who said they did, and I'm sure, like, I, I would imagine that once the spirit leaves the body, and especially if the, the spirit is made up of energy, and you know, it, it, the brain uses elect, you know, electricity, and it fires on, you know, neurons, and. Uh, to, you know, to create memories and to store information that if once the spirit re-enters the body that all that information gets processed all at once like it, you know what I mean it, that elect, since the electricity jumps back in that the brain kind of uh, re you know, receives that information you know and, and is aware of everything that has happened I mean you got people who have been in comas and have been fully aware of everything that's been you know gone on around them though that they were catatonic for years it's it, that's something that 
but I, I'm not sure how to explain. I mean, it, scientifically, it, they haven't been able to explain it either. So uh, I would like to know the answer to that question myself. Well, you know, what brings some, uh, I guess, substance to the conversation is that, that some of these people who have encountered this are, are not only laymen, but doctors who have spent many years studying, uh, become surgeons, and they've had uh, out-of-body experiences. So, you know. Oh, absolutely. There was actually, a, on Facebook, it was about two or three days ago I saw this, but I think it had been a couple of years since it actually happened. A cardiologist was working on a, a man who had been legally dead for almost 40 minutes, and he heard, a, the cardiologist said he heard a voice say, pray for him and try again. And the doctor was a religious man, and he, uh, and he uh, prayed, and he went back in and grabbed his paddles and gave the man one more shot, you know, one more shock of electricity with a defibrillator, and the man mysteriously just popped, sprung back to life. And, which is unheard of. I mean, that's an incredible amount of time to be legally dead for. Because, you know, that after, I think, like three or four minutes, it, you're, you, have, you suffer, like, permanent brain damage. And, and there's a lot of mysteries out there that, you know. That, and I hope something that's something that we can uh, uh, look into as our, our team grows and our investigations grow here on our website, our podcast, um, and we're hoping that you, the audience, will uh, uh, look at our podcast and, and, and travel through these journeys with us to find the truth in, in a lot of these um, claimed events that's, uh, that's out there that, uh, that Bruce and I are going to look into. Um, uh, Bruce, talk a little bit about your ley line theory that you brought up tonight. Oh, okay. Um, what I was... Uh explaining to Daryl earlier, I was talking about the Earth's natural ley lines, which if for, you, uh, for you out there who don't understand what ley lines are, ley lines are, they, uh, they're lines that follow the Earth's natural tectonic plates, and through the cracks between the plates is where the Earth releases natural releases of uh, electromagnetic energy, uh, which, you know, uh, the Earth generates electromagnetic energy as it rotates, you know, on the axis for gravity gravity is technically essentially a magnetic force and the earth's core is full of nickel and other metals and uh anyway um through these ley lines uh <laughs> for thousands of years many cultures and uh civilizations have known about them and gave them different names like the druids called them dragon lines even the native americans called them spirit lines and uh on these ley lines where the uh, magnetic energy was the strongest like Native Americans would make their medicine and their shamans would pray and on these lines they could actually have uh, more success communicating with the spirit world and since spirits are you know essentially electro, uh, a source of electromagnetic energy and if you watch ghost hunters or ghost adventures they use EMF detectors to detect spirits and it would only make sense that for if, if let's say someone lived on a right on one of these ley lines or near one of these ley lines that their concentration of paranormal activity that would happen in a haunted location would be far stronger than it would be if you were away from these lines because you're naturally feeding that energy to the spirits now and so you know this brings us back to the the theory that uh, our our soul our spirit, or whatever you want to call it, is is energy, and so you're saying if this energy that that we have, um, it actually picks up more power near these these lines, so it has more energy to um, to show itself. And you were talking about earlier that this this line that we look at right now that runs from uh, England, right? Uh, the Stonehenge is actually right on a ley line. Like, and many civilizations, even our own, uh, have built some of our biggest monuments right on these ley lines. And the Capitol Hill, like, you know, the, the White House falls right on the ley line. Uh, 
so along with the Washington Monument. Um, but Pilot Mountain right here in North Carolina actually perfectly lines up on the Stonehenge ley line. And people who've been to Pilot Mountain uh, claim that it has an energy vortex in that area where it's right between the actual knob and in that little valley where natural uh, magnetic electromagnetic energy kind of circumvents because Pilot Mountain is actually dead center of an intersection of three different ley lines as well. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting how uh, that energy affects the natural environment and sometimes if the in some areas where the uh, electromagnetic energy is incredibly strong, people even claim to black out, you know, because from it is because it affected their body. You also mentioned that uh, the line runs through like Boston, uh, yes. places like that, where there's an extremely high uh, volume of reported uh, paranormal activity. Oh, absolutely. That same Stonehenge ley line uh, flows through Boston, uh, Washington, D.C., right through Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, all the way down to Mexico City. And it, it's pretty amazing. So if we went and graphed these ley lines all across the United States, there's a good chance we're going to find that they fall in areas where there's an abnormal amount of paranormal activity, which is documented? Uh, I would say that would be like the places where the paranormal activity would be the strongest. I mean, paranormal activity could essentially happen anywhere, but it would. I would say the best evidence would probably come, come from places like that because spirits would have that extra energy to manifest. That's probably going to be another podcast, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, if you'll, you'll probably see where we will do some research just on, on that uh, that on that theory itself. So uh, there's a lot that uh, we're hoping that you'll uh, gain from, from our podcast, a lot of knowledge and uh, actual scientific proof that we're... Uh, going to try to dig up for you guys and uh, uh, again please follow us on uh, mothmanpodcast.com uh, our Facebook is uh, facebook.com forward slash mothmanpodcast and our Twitter at mothmanpodcast1 thank you Bruce and um, we hope to see you there and, and we, we hope that you will also write in and if you have a experience that you would like to share with us we would love to have you in the studio and and talk about it um there are some people that don't want to be recognized and some people who do want to be recognized and we take that you know seriously and we will um, we will talk to you no matter if you want to give your name or not uh we do take phone calls uh email us at uh mothman podcast at gmail.com and Leave a phone number, and we will be more than happy to contact you. And uh, we can even do an interview over the phone if that's what you would like. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of things out there. We're we're new starting to this, and we're looking forward to, to talking to each and every one. So don't hesitate to give us a call anytime. Bruce, you have anything? Uh, yeah, um, we have an upcoming paranormal investigation coming up this Wednesday at Old Salisbury Road. So... Stay tuned to see what evidence we dig up, and we'll be posting videos and audio of the interviews with the, uh, the people who live there, as well as whatever evidence we dig up. Again, thank you for tuning in to MothmanPodcast.com, and we hope to see or talk to you soon. Thank you for listening.